Hello, Anime Visor here, with a review for Seven Seeds. Yeah, that was my mistake too. Yes, but with a caveat. There's still one good thing the anime brings, despite it being a borderline mockery of the source material it's adapting. But more on that later. First... Exactly. Based on a manga by Yumi Tamura, the anime premiered on Netflix and is animated by Gonzo. Which is far from what it used to be, but every once in a while has a hidden gem like Al Kana. However, the Seven Seeds anime is not one of those gems. In the near future, a giant meteorite collided with the Earth, wiping out all living organisms, including mankind. The government, however, took countermeasures for the worst case scenario, specifically Project Seven Seeds, where five groups of seven young men and women were carefully selected, placed into teams, and cryogenically frozen in hopes of preserving the continued existence of mankind. Now with those men and women having woken up, they find themselves thrust into a cruel world, Still coming to terms with what has happened, and forever losing their loved ones, they must find a way to survive in this harsh new reality. I mean, the story itself is. However, the anime almost completely butchers it. It starts with the pacing which is way too fast. It hits some of the big plot points and narratives, but never gives the audience enough time for anything to really sink in before moving on to the next thing. It inevitably leads to moments of not understanding why characters do some of the things they do. This was at its worst during the Summer Team A flashback. We barely know any of Summer Team A, let alone all the kids it introduces in said flashback. And it does a terrible job explaining or even showing why these characters did what they did. Then the anime will turn around and slow to a crawl, adapting the flashback at the shelter. It was only one episode, but I swear it felt like three. It just drags on. Of the major flashbacks, Winter Teams was probably the best handled, but animation-wise, like most of the series, it's bad too. Now, I read the manga after finishing the anime, and another aspect of it being too quickly paced is it doesn't do nearly as good of a job building up the world that characters find themselves in. Part of the reason why I decided to watch this anime initially was that the world described in the synopsis sounded interesting to me. However, after reading the manga, there are various flora and fauna the anime doesn't cover, or doesn't showcase them in the same way, some of which are kind of interesting. And while it shows this plant dinosaur looking thing in the anime, it doesn't really explain or elaborate on them like in the manga, which helps with the world building. Tying into that is that this is a survival anime, which come to think about are fairly popular this season, with the likes of Are You Lost, Astro Lost in Space, and Dr. Stone airing. Anyway, Seven Seeds is a survival anime, and because of the quick pacing, it doesn't go too in-depth on things like soap, what they use for toilet paper, or other hygiene products. Things that the manga does touch on, but here in the anime, it kind of breaks the illusion of a survival series if that's not showcased in some way at least once. In a serious anime like this, the other three anime I mentioned are a lot more comedic, but in a serious survival anime like this, it's important to establish how the characters get by with some of the things they used to take for granted. We don't need to know every time Natsu takes a dump or every time Hana gets a visit from Aunt Flo, but it should establish how they are coping now in this new world. Again, because this anime is so quickly paced, it doesn't take the time to do that. Generally, when an anime is adapted from a manga, one anime episode will cover two to three manga chapters. That's not a hard set rule, could be a little less, could be a little more, but I would say that is the average most of the time. However, considering where the story stops here in Seven Seeds, which by the way is a terrible cliffhanger, as it just ends with all the characters assuming Hana is dead, a better cliffhanger I think would have been that after she was washed away, it ended there. That way the audience and the characters would all be in the same boat about her fate, instead of having one awkward extra scene where their characters assume she's dead. Anyway, getting back on track, the anime has 12 episodes, however it adapts 86 chapters from the manga, which doing some quick maths would be about 29 episodes worth of content. 
It's a bit hard to say where the anime should have ended since it moves some events around, but if this was a proper adaptation that was properly paced, a good stopping point I think would have been when Natsu, Arashi, and Semimaru found the ship, which was in episode 6. Essentially, it's going about twice as fast as I think it should be. The pacing is not good, the world building and story all suffer for it, and as I briefly mentioned, the animation is not good either. But there is a small glimmer of decency in this anime, one thing that prevents this anime from turning into a total train wreck, and that is the characters, primarily Natsu, Arashi, and Hana. I say that's one thing the anime does right, but it could just as easily be said that Yumi Tamura's characters were so well done that even a crappy adaptation like this, they still shine through. Seven Seeds most of the time is either told from Natsu or Hana's perspective, which creates a nice juxtaposition of the events of the story, and also their personal view of the world. Natsu who is shy and timid, she struggles to talk to people let alone make friends, and has almost zero survivability skills. Hana on the other hand, is brash, hard-headed, but has a can-do attitude and in general is an uplifting presence. Not to mention she has far more adept survival skills than Natsu. Going back and forth between the two of them is a very nice complement to the story that really enriches it, giving the audience two completely different perspectives on the story and world. Then there is the major overarching plot with Ashi and Hana, who were going out before the world was destroyed and are holding out hope that the other survived and that they'll meet again someday. Seeing that glimmer of hope and optimism in each of them was really touching and was the biggest reason why I decided to start reading the manga. I really wanted to know and see if they would find each other. General rule of thumb in media signum, if there's no body shown, then they're probably not dead. Anyway, I really enjoyed characters like Hana, Arashi, and Natsu, and honestly most of the characters aren't too bad until Team Summer A is introduced. The anime really fumbled their introduction and paints them as the bad guys more than they should be to the audience. But that's the sort of thing that happens when you rush through everything and reorder events for some reason. Again, I'm not sure how much credit the anime deserves for somehow not screwing up the main characters too much, or if it's more that Yumi Tamura's characters were so well done to begin with, it's hard to screw them up. At any rate, the Seven Seeds anime is not good. It's a poor adaptation with poor animation, but somehow didn't screw the characters up too much. Well, at least the main ones. I don't really want to recommend this anime. I would say go ahead and just read the manga, but if you're like me, Maybe watching the anime will give you that little push to go check out the manga. With all that said, that'll wrap up my thoughts on Seven Seeds. Let us know your thoughts on Seven Seeds down in the comments. As always, I've been Anime Visor. Thanks for watching. Remember to properly paste your anime. And goodbye. <laughs>